and uh, a penny for your thoughts, too. We're going to finish up talking about uh, the Penny Lab. And uh, we should understand uh, that uh, chemical change occurs when atoms bond with new atoms. Sort of like how we talked about before, about how atoms are a little bit like Legos. And if you put them with different partners, that's a chemical change. We should be able to determine if uh, a change is chemical or physical based on a chemical equation. And we should be able to tell if a change is chemical or physical based on molecular modeling. Molecular modeling, kind of like we did that last thing uh, when, in, the, in the last lecture. Um, and we should also understand that a uh, physical change is when particles change their position. So when we, if you just move a particle around, that's not a chemical or physical change. So moving forward, guys, uh, take a look at this cartoon for a sec up here. Um, it's pretty cool. I'll pause this for a sec and we can discuss it. So, so uh, the first chemists were uh, just people that took some rocks, they heated it up, and they found out that once uh, one of those liquids that came out of a hot rock cooled, it, it turned into metallic copper. So, um, and this made uh, lots of other things uh, happen. Chemistry, people have been using it for years not even knowing that that it was there so like uh, they made uh, they turned stuff into iron they made uh, uh, building materials um, they made uh, soap uh, out of uh, lye and fat and made yogurt uh, they made beer uh, kimchi which is one of my favorite foods if anyone has a chance to get some kimchi um, it's delicious um, so this is chemistry caused the rise of modern civilization. So just keep that in mind. So chemistry is very important and linked in with all those other things. So, um, and this is, oh, I think we already talked about this. So in a penny for your thoughts, we tried to turn uh, copper into gold. Impossible. Um, so let's uh, move on. So this is what you guys are going to want to copy this down. I'll uh, I'll go through this and then I'll give you guys. So listen up for a sec first. Everybody listen and then I'll give you guys a minute to copy it down. So a chemical change is when a, a new substance is formed. Atoms are bonded differently than they were to start, and we actually have a new type of particle, a type that wasn't there before. Okay, a physical change, we have the same substance. Um, the atoms are bonded in the same groups as the, when they started, and the particle itself changes position. And I'll give an example of that, each type. So I'll give that in a sec. I'll let you guys copy this down right now. So moving on. Uh, here are a couple examples of some physical changes. Now, you guys don't have to copy down the uh, the particles, the molecular models. But I would ask that you guys copy down the uh, the text, the evaporation. So, uh, eva and uh, this here, this little L, that's an L, not a 1. Meaning it's H2O liquid. And that's H2O gas. <laughs> So this would be an example of a physical change. Hold on, guys. I'll let you guys copy this down. Sorry. I'll give you guys some time. So this is a physical change, guys, because look up here. Look what happens. So what are the groups here when we start? What are the groups of particles? Wait a Antonio. What are the groups of particles made up of? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, it's, this is uh, great. It's groups of hydrogen and oxygen. Specifically, two hydrogens and one oxygen. So that's what the particle's made up of. And what does it end up as? H12. Groups of two hydrogens and one oxygen. What's happening is the particle, and if you guys look at this, the particle here is, is the same as it was before and after. 
What did we change about the particle? We changed. What, what did we change, Tommy? We changed the position of the particle. And that's where we can remember the P, the P trick. And it's a physical change, which begins with P. The particles change position. Particle, particle position, physical. Okay? That's a good way to remember that. Um, also, if you take a sheet of metal, and you know metals are malleable, I maybe don't, but malleability is a property that if you, you it can be hammered into thin sheets. And that's something we can do with metal. Um, so if we take solid copper, say we have this little cube or rectangular prism of solid copper, and we hammer it out, what we're doing is that's physical change because we still have the same copper particles. The copper particles are the same before and after. So you can have physical changes with um, compounds. You can have physical changes with elements. You can have physical changes with mixtures. Um, so, uh, and you can also tell by the groups of particles before and after. So that's how you can actually determine if a, a, a change is chemical or physical based on an equation. This is here is a chemical equation right here. You guys have probably seen those in biology. Who's seen those in biology? Chemical equations? You probably did photosynthesis, um, cellular respiration. I think those might have been the two big biggies for uh, bio that you've seen. But I know you guys have done it. So I'll give you guys a second to finish copying that down. Moving forward, chemical changes. Again, if you guys uh, just don't have to copy on the, uh, the actual molecular models, but try to make sure you get the equations down there. So uh, chemical changes, guys, are a little bit uh, different here. Chemical changes, for example, we have hydrolysis, hydrolysis. You can see those two words. What is hydro? Water. And what is lice? To lice something. What is that? What's that? Kill in uh, biology in the sense, in the chemistry sense, it just means to break up. So hydrolysis, hydrolysis, you can see that it breaks up water. A lot of times, guys, you can learn a lot from uh, the words in science. It kind of explains what it does if you look to the root of the meaning. So we have water, H2O, which breaks down into hydrogen and oxygen. So what's actually happening there? Uh, let's see. What, what's going on there, Kate? What do you see? What's happening to the actual particle? Good. So we, we start off with uh, groups of oxygen and hydrogen all together. The particles are made of one oxygen and two hydrogens. And they break up into, they break the particles, separate into hydrogen particles and oxygen particles. Good. Now combustion, we start off with methane. And uh, methane is actually something we find in natural gas. Who has a, ga a natural gas stove at home? You know, the one where you, uh, you turn the knob and it goes click, 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 and then it, and then it lights up? I have one. I love it. I cook on it all the time. No? Just one person has natural gas stove? Two? Two? What do you have? Electric? Okay. Electric stoves are good, too. They work. They cook things. So, this is actually the reaction that goes on in a natural gas stove, or natural gas heating, or the Bunsen burners we happen to have here. Uh, we have CH4, which is uh, also known as methane, and that just reacts with oxygen making carbon dioxide and water. So you see what we start off with. We start off with particles made of one carbon and four hydrogens. Okay, see that? That's why it's called CH4. CH4. If there's no subscript, the subscript guys are the ones that are below, right? That means there's just one. One is understood. So CH4 means one carbon, four hydrogen. 
We react that with O2 oxygen, and what well, our products are CO2 and H2O. So we just change what particles are bonded with what. Okay? Does that make sense? All right. Uh, any questions before we move on and try something? No? All right, guys. So key things are chemical changes. We the Atoms are bonded to new atoms that they weren't before. Physical changes. The atoms are still bonded in the same groups, but they're just moving around. They're changing the position. Okay? All right, guys. So... So let's, uh, we'll stop this uh, and uh, move on to.